Hello and happy International Translation Day. My name is Antonia Lloyd-Jones. I'm a translator of Polish literature and I have been asked by Translators Aloud to tell you a little bit about my experience of recording readings from my own work. So firstly, they've asked me to tell you what it was like to record the audio book of my own translation of a novel by the 2018 Nobel Prize winner Olga Tokarczuk uh, called Drive Your Plough Over the Bones of the Dead. Before I made the recording of the audio book, I had done quite a lot of readings of extracts from the book at public events and they've been very well received which was what gave me the courage to ask the publisher if there was any chance that I could read the audiobook. And those promotional extracts were very short and to catch the audience's attention I chose very punchy pieces that I knew would give a flavour of the book quickly. And the narrator of the book is a very eccentric character and she's central to the reader's understanding of the book. She has to catch the reader's attention and she has to be bizarre, but she also has to be sympathetic so that you'll stick with her through 250 pages. And in a sense, become her accomplice as she does some somewhat unconventional things without any spoilers. Um, and in those short readings, I could exaggerate her quite a lot and I could make the audience laugh by giving her a spin. I was playing a role, adding a tone to the text. But when it came to reading the whole book, I very soon realised that I couldn't actually put on a voice and act a part for that length of text. Not only would I be quite unable to sustain it, but I would also annoy the listener quite quickly and they'd give up on me, which would defeat the whole purpose. So by acting too much, I'd be adding another layer of interpretation to the translation, which would prejudice the listener's reception of the narrator's voice. And of course, when you read a text off the page, you give it your own spin. You imagine the characters in your own way, how they look and how they sound. But when you listen to a text being read by somebody else, that reader is leading you by imposing their idea of those characters on you. Um, and I think that's partly why some people don't like audiobooks or prefer some to others. Um, and I realised that part of the art of a good reading is to leave the listener enough space to use their own imagination, just as the reader of the print version can. And so after a full start, I listened to good advice from the producer of the audiobook recording, Kate Bland at Cast Iron Radio. And I started all over again, and I read the book as myself, neutrally, which was much easier to do, and I hope was a better way of presenting the narrator to the listeners that still left them to draw their own conclusions and react to her naturally. As translators, we're already interpreters of the text, and to some extent, we can't help invisibly imposing our understanding of it. So what I realised was that as a reader of an audio book, I mustn't impose any more of myself than necessary. And I've been asked to tell you how the studio experience differed from recording myself at home. And it was very different not just because of the length of the text and because I had I didn't have to make a quick impact on an audience but also because it took a lot more preparation. I read the whole book to myself aloud getting funny looks on trains and I marked up the text to remind myself of changes of tone and difficult words and I also highlighted all the dialogues in different colours so that I could keep track of who was speaking when and try to give some modulation to the different voices. And in being in a studio is actually a lot easier in many ways because you get some direction and feedback from the producer 
and you can stumble and start again as often as you like because your recording will be edited for you and other people are taking care of the technical side of things which is luxurious in the extreme and if you would like to know more about my audiobook experience you can find a blog I wrote about it on the Fitzcarraldo Editions website last thing I would say about it is that it was absolute hell on my throat um, my recording took three days and I felt as if I'd swallowed a box of tin tacks um, though luckily the producer provided professional throat lozenges there really is such a thing so um, the next question I've been asked is whether there's any particular equipment or setup I'd recommend for people recording themselves at home. I just use an iPhone camera set to video, but here are my tips, which will probably seem blindingly obvious and extremely patronizing, but um, I think it's worth spending some time trying to get these things right if you haven't thought about it before. So see if you prefer reading your text from a computer screen or from a printout. Today I don't have a printer handy, so I've balanced my phone on my laptop and I'm looking at my notes on screen and that's why I keep looking away from you. Sometimes when I'm recording a piece, of, a piece I'm reading something that's work in progress. Sometimes I'm reading from a finished book and then obviously I would show you the book. Um, try to work out the best angle for your camera, ideally pointing at you rather than at the ceiling. Um, I spend a while usually trying to find the right place and roughly the right height and the right light. It's never perfect, but it really doesn't matter because this is about the reading. It's not about your self-filming skills. Um, think about your preferred background. Books always look really nice, but you might want to try a few different locations and experiment with the light. Out of doors can be a very refreshing change. Uh, you get some ambient noise. Um, I sometimes balance the phone in a tree and birds contribute to the reading, which is very nice, but motorbikes are perhaps a bit less desirable. Um, so today I have a poster behind me which is a picture of a book cover and it I thought it went rather well with my t-shirt so I can be camouflaged against it um, I don't like how I look on camera and I haven't got the money for plastic surgery so I try to put on something more interesting than my pandemic pajamas so today you get a, a translation message t-shirt um, as if I were in public and then I expect to make one or two failed recordings before it comes out. Right, this is take three. Um, no one's going to see the fluffs. And just like with translation, I'm never entirely satisfied with the final result, which is perfectly human and perfectly all right. Um, just a detail on the technical front, I find that the best way to send the result to the person who's going to publish the recording is via WeTransfer, which is nice and easy to use. And then I've been asked to provide some tips for those who feel camera shy or who aren't very confident reading aloud. Um, I always get stage fright before I'm reading to an audience, even when I'm recording myself at home like this. But I think it's a good sign because it means I'm aware of the audience. And so I always say, don't worry about feeling worried. And once again, my tips will seem pretty obvious, I think. Um, the main thing to remember is that what counts is the reading. Obviously, I get caught up, as I've said, in how I look or how the room looks, but do Take a look at the existing Translators Allowed recordings on YouTube. They have some really lovely things there. And the whole site is just such a great idea. A place where we can read from new work without any pressure. And the most effective readings are very natural and friendly. So be yourself. Remember that it's not a competition. It doesn't have to look perfect. It's just a great opportunity to promote your work. Do select your piece very carefully. Um, if possible, 
just as you would do for a public performance before an audience. Try to find a standalone anecdotal piece that catches the attention quickly or perhaps something with a cliffhanger ending so you leave them wanting more or something funny or something shocking. And if you choose an extract that includes dialogue, uh, make sure the voices sound different enough in tone or the listener will find it very hard to follow. So rehearse it until you feel it's right and make a couple of practice recordings that you won't use. And then I find I tend to read too fast. So time the reading before you record it to see just how much you really can read in a few minutes. And you can tweak and edit the text to remove anything non-essential. It doesn't have to be the same as on the page. Another very obvious hint is to remember to add an introduction which gives the audience time to tune in and focus on what you're saying. And remember to mention anything that the listener needs to know. I did a recording for Translators Aloud myself recently and forgot to mention that the narrator is a man. Um, try to look at the camera now and then to engage the reader and rehearse lots of times. Record yourself and play it back or get a friend to provide feedback because it is a public performance of sorts, but one where you just have to be you reading to your friends. And lastly, I'd like to say a huge thank you to Charlotte Coombe and Tina Cover for setting up Translators Aloud, which really is a fantastic new resource for all of us. And I'm especially looking forward to their new feature, which is called Seeking a Publisher which will allow us to showcase new work that we're trying to pitch. Uh, my own piece is going to be featured there, I'm happy to say. What a great opportunity to get potential publishers to listen. Thank you very much for listening to me. Happy International Translation Day. Goodbye.